Okay, uh, so today let us discuss uh, this new chapter and uh, like I told you in the last class uh, that uh, today we are going to be discussing a uh, new approach to uh, studying quantum mechanics and that is uh, not using the usual type of operators that you see in Schrodinger's quantum mechanics like momentum and position and that sort of thing. But instead we will be uh, using the method of raising and lowering operators that means creating and annihilating. Uh, initially we will be creating and annihilating excitations that is the quanta uh, which correspond to the excitations of the system. But later on we will uh, reinterpret these ideas or rather generalize these ideas to accommodate uh, not merely excitations of an underlying system. but uh, we will be introducing operators that correspond to creating and annihilating particles themselves rather than merely excitations. Okay, uh, so, to understand how to do that let us start with a very familiar uh, situations. So, that means we will start with a very familiar example as usual it is either free particle or harmonic oscillator. So, those are the you know the standard uh, workhorses of uh, quantum mechanics and even classical mechanics. So, it sometimes uh, we get the impression that those are the only uh, two models that physicists know how to solve and that would be only be a slight exaggeration. In fact, many of the examples that you encounter in uh, physics are either approximated as free particles or approximated as harmonic oscillator. So, you might be wondering why that is, is that because of a lack of imagination uh, in, the, in the physics community or is there a deeper reason? Actually there is a deeper reason namely that you see the free particle uh, is a prototype of a system which is unbound and uh, whose uh, wave functions are not localized that means it is completely delocalized. So, it represents a quantum particle that is not bound to anything. See whereas, a harmonic oscillator represents a situation which is uh, extremely localized and the particle is bound to some, some other object. So, these are uh, opposite extremes. So, in nature we encounter uh, situations that are somewhere in between. So, either you are closer to one extreme or the other usually. So, it makes sense to pretend that uh, you know as a first approximation you pretend that you are either exactly at one of the extreme or the other. So, it is not really a, due to a lack of imagination among physicists, but rather it is a reflection of the fact that that is how um, practically many systems in nature behave. Okay, with that preamble let us start discuss uh, the harmonic oscillator and let us try and understand how to study harmonic oscillators not uh, using position and momentum, but we are going to use position and momentum to derive a representation or a picture rework the harmonic oscillator in terms of creation and annihilation operators. So, you see the operators that correspond to creating and annihilating quanta have a very well defined mathematically precise uh, definition in terms of the more traditional position and momentum operators. So, let us see how to do that practically speaking. So, let us start with this familiar starting point namely that uh, the Hamiltonian of a harmonic oscillator clearly is given by this. So, it has the kinetic energy and a potential energy which is of the form half k x squared. So, it is basically where x is the displacement from some equilibrium position. So, what I am going to do is that uh, you see uh, if I were doing Schrodinger's quantum mechanics what would I do? I would find the stationary states by simply writing a p, p as a minus i h bar d by d x and I would simply write this as a, a h psi equal to e psi and then I would solve for the uh, stationary states. So, and I would be getting those Hermite polynomials and so on and so forth and I would be getting my eigenvalues as n plus half times h bar omega. So, that is all well understood uh, from Schrodinger's uh, approach, but I want to do it differently. 
So, to do it differently I adopt the following approach. So, what I am going to do is I am going to multiply this by some number some, some constant which is non-zero. So, I am going to multiply and, and I am going to specifically select it to be positive because it is up to me to decide what, what to multiply and divide with. So, basically I am multiplying and dividing by this by the same constant. So, this so if I expand this out this will this will cancel out. So, with this see there is E 0 in the denominator E 0 in the numerator. So, they will cancel out and I will get back this uh, original. So, uh, I am not done anything. So, if E 0 is uh, positive uh, so long as it is non-zero but I am selecting positive. So, if it is positive I have not made any mistake at all because E 0 is just a number. But what I am going to do is I am going to uh, rewrite this object I am going to call this x squared sorry I am going to call this y squared and I am going to call this x squared. So, I am going to call p squared by 2 m e 0 as capital y squared and uh, m omega squared x squared by 2 e 0 as capital x squared. So, this is going to be my capital x squared and this is going to be my capital y squared. So, uh, so now the question is you see what is the form of this Hamiltonian it has the form E 0 into y squared plus x squared I should have written y squared plus x squared ok. So, it is uh, E 0 so this is basically uh, writable as uh, y squared plus x squared. So, what is y? So, y is going to be this one. So, it I define y as p by under root 2 m e 0. So, you see uh, because e 0 is positive and clearly m is positive square root of 2 m e 0 is positive because the positive square root of a positive number and p is a uh, operator which is Hermitian because p is momentum. So, it is Hermitian. So, similarly capital X is defined as uh, square root of 2 m e 0 and m and e 0 are positive. So, again it is square root of a positive number which is positive times omega which is positive. So, times uh, x, x is the position operator which is uh, again Hermitian. So, then capital X is Hermitian and capital Y therefore is also Hermitian. So, you have two Hermitian operators which are linear in position and momentum and they are called capital Y and capital X. So, now your Hamiltonian is basically uh, E 0 into y squared plus x squared. So, now I am going to uh, I want to factorize this. So, normally you see if uh, y and x were just uh, some numbers I could easily write that as uh, a y squared plus x squared can easily be written as y plus i x into y minus i x. Uh, but then uh, y and x are not numbers they are actually Hermitian operators. So, I have to be little bit more careful. So, if I see suppose I uh, write y plus i x and then I multiply by y minus i x. So, what do I get? I get y squared. So, that will be the first two uh, product of the first two things. Then I will get y into minus i x. So, I will get minus i into y x. So, you see I have to be very careful about the order because I cannot write x into y when I mean y into x because x and y do not commute. See because what is y? y is proportional to the momentum operator whereas capital X is proportional to the position operator and you, we know that position and momentum do not commute. So, if uh, in your expression y comes before x you should uh, make y also I mean you should never write uh, x into y when it is coming out as y into x. So, you see uh, in this uh, expression you will get uh, uh, once you will get minus i into y into x then uh, next cross term you will get plus i into x into y. So, you will get both these things. So, if x and y are just numbers uh, instead of operators uh, this would have cancelled out because then y into x would be equal to x into y. But in now in this particular case these are not operate I mean these are not numbers they are operators. So, they do not cancel out. So, capital X is uh, constant into position operator 
capital Y is a constant into momentum operator. So, they do not commute. So, x into y is not equal to y into x. So, then finally, the last term is plus i capital X into minus i capital X. So, plus i into minus i is plus 1. So, it is basically plus 1 into x square. So, you see this is what I will get. So, x squared plus or y squared plus x squared can be written as. So, what I want is this, I want y squared plus x squared and what is y squared plus x squared? It is this one, then I have to make sure I subtract out whatever extra is here. So, what is that extra thing? So, that extra thing is basically uh, i into x commutator y because what is the definition of commutator? x commutator y means x into y minus y into x. So, that is the definition of commutator. So, I take that commutator to the other side because then I want only y squared plus x squared on, on one side and the remaining I want on the other side. So, the other side already has uh, y plus i x into y minus i x. So, then I have to make sure that I uh, uh, transfer the extra term which is this commutator on the other side. So, when I do that I will now be successful in writing. So, I will be successful in writing the Hamiltonian as that constant which I have arbitrarily introduced which is positive times a y plus i x into y minus i x minus i uh, times that constant into commutator x y. Okay. So, that is what I will end up doing. So, now let us see uh, so, what, what should we do next? So, the next thing I am going to do is the following. So, I am going to call y plus i x as a dagger. So, I am just going to give it some name. So, I will call y minus i x as a and clearly because y and x are Hermitian, I can take the Hermitian adjoint that means I take dagger on both sides. If I take dagger on both sides, y dagger is y because y is Hermitian but then minus i becomes plus i because uh, dagger will make the, uh, the operators become Hermitian adjoint, but uh, it will make complex numbers their complex conjugate. So, minus i will become plus i and capital X is because it is Hermitian it will remain capital X. So, then a dagger is y plus i x whereas a is y minus i x. So, now uh, with that sort of a definition you can see that also further because x is defined like this y is defined like this, x commutator y is basically uh, this one. Okay. So, now, uh, so it is some constant, but what I am going to further demand is because you see uh, I introduced this capital E0 arbitrarily, I just said it is positive and non-zero, I did not specify its value. So, now I am going to specify this value indirectly. And how am I going to specify the value? I am going to uh, force the value to be such that the commutator of A and A dagger are, is simple. And the simplest uh, commutator clearly uh, the commutator of A and A dagger will be non-zero. So, the simplest non-zero number you can think of is 1. So, I will force the commutator of A and A dagger to be 1. So, when I force that to be the case, then you see uh, this, uh, this a, a dagger, when I work it out, it will come out because a is defined like this, uh, a dagger is therefore this. So, the commutator of a and a dagger will come out as minus 2i commutator x and y, but we can evaluate because x and y are in terms of uh, position and momentum. So, we can work out the uh, exact uh, answer for x commutator y. So, when you work that out uh, and substitute, you will get commutator of A and A dagger to be h bar omega by E0 which I have introduced. But now, I am forcing the commutator of A and A dagger uh, to be 1 because you know I can force it to be any non-zero uh, real number I want, but I want to force it to be the simplest non-zero real number and the simplest non-zero real number is always 1. So, I am going to force it to be 1. So, if I force it to be 1, so but then a commutator a dagger I have just calculated and the answer comes out as h bar omega by e0. That e0 I have, I have myself in inserted into my uh, equation. So, now by demanding that the commutator of a and a dagger should be the simplest non-zero number which is 1, I can now calculate that e0 has to be h bar omega 
then only the commutator of A and A dagger will be the simplest non-zero number. So, that means I can just go ahead and substitute all that here and I will be able to get this answer. So, H will come out as H bar omega into A dagger A plus half. Okay. So, now this is familiar to us okay. and uh, we also know that uh, so, the, so this is not really the end of the story, this is actually the beginning of the story. So, the next is you have to construct the ground state of the system. See A dagger A is clearly non-negative because it has the form of uh, Z star Z. See if Z was a complex number clearly Z star Z is a real number which is not negative. So, similarly A star A dagger A is a Hermitian operator which has non-negative eigenvalues. So, uh, you can suspect that the uh, if you can find a state which has the property that uh, it is annihilated when A acts on it then you can expect that that will be the ground state because uh, you cannot uh, A dagger A cannot have an eigenvalue smaller than 0. So, clearly if 0 is a possibility that should be the lowest eigenvalue. So, in fact, you can you can easily solve this and find that uh, there is a uh, acceptable psi 0 that comes out by solving this equation and that will be of the form of that Gaussian because you remember what A is, A is in terms of y and x and what is y? y is proportional to momentum and uh, capital X is proportional to position and what is momentum is minus i h bar d by d x. So, this will this will actually be a first order differential equation which you can solve. So, when you solve that you will get basically a Gaussian. So, all these things we, we, we can relegate to tutorials. Uh, strictly speaking these are part of prerequisite because uh, it is uh, you are supposed to know all this from quantum mechanics, somebody should have taught you. But if you feel that uh, your background is a little bit uh, wanting and that uh, your background is not up to the mark, then you can we can certainly have tutorials to rectify that. So, in fact, there are some subtle issues here which you have to address. For example, uh, sure, I mean you can construct uh, a bunch of states like this. So, if uh, from here you get the ground state, but then you can construct uh, another state called psi a, a 0 and you can show that the eigenvalue of this one means the uh, Hamiltonian. So, all these will be eigenstates of the Hamiltonian. So, the eigenvalue of the Hamiltonian corresponding to the ground state will be half h bar omega, whereas it will be 3 by 2 h bar omega here. So, what is not clear is that these uh, states are complete that means you have to show that uh, there are no other eigenstates uh, other than these and that is not at all obvious. Uh, so, the all you can show is that these are certainly eigenstates of the Hamiltonian that is easy to show, but what is not easy to show is that uh, you know these are the only possible eigenstates that there are no other eigenstates of H. So, that is not at all easy to show and uh, when I taught this course in IIT, uh, well I taught a different course, but uh, I had asked this question in one of the tutorials and sadly no student was able to answer it. So, the question is that how do you know that these are the only eigenstates, right. So, you have to show that these are complete. and. Uh, so, that is something we can also relegate to tutorials because that is especially not discussed in uh, any of the undergraduate or even MSE courses in at least in India it is not discussed. So, uh, it is worthwhile looking into that because you see these NPTEL courses especially the courses that I teach are typically those that are meant to fill in gaps in your education that might. Uh, otherwise exist as a result of uh, uh, you know the courses that you learn from your MSc uh, syllabi and so on and so forth. So, I think uh, given that that is the aim of these courses, uh, it is worthwhile to include these, uh, these types of somewhat challenging issues to the uh, tutorials. So, keep that in at the back of your mind that we will have to at some stage show that uh, these uh, states uh, not only are obviously eigenstates that is that is easier to show, but 
more difficult and important is that these are the only possible eigenstates. Okay. So, anyway let us relegate that to a later date and we will discuss that at a later date. So, now let us generalize what we have been discussing you see. So, what we have been discussing so far is basically a mass tied to a spring. Okay. So, that means sir, what is a harmonic oscillator? It is just a mass tied to a spring and we are now uh, imagining that that mass uh, basically obeys the laws of quantum mechanics. Of course, you might be wondering that what sort of a microscopic system will have a spring, but spring is actually a metaphor that means it is basically it is not literally a spring, it is basically a potential energy that goes through a minimum. So, any potential energy that goes through a minimum can be tailor expanded around that minimum and it can uh, mimic the, uh, that of a spring. You see if x, x is the displacement from an equilibrium, so any function of uh, x can be written uh, like this, right. So, you can write this as x v dash 0 plus x squared plus by 2 factorial v dash dash 0 and so on so forth. So, this is Taylor series. So, you see if x, x equal to 0 is equilibrium then the force so, what is v dash minus uh, dv by dx at x equal to 0 is the force acting on the particle. So, if x equal to 0 is equilibrium then the force at equilibrium is 0. So, v dash 0 should be 0. So, the linear term will be absent at equilibrium if x equal to 0 is indeed the equilibrium position of that particle then uh, there is no linear term. So, the potential energy close to the equilibrium is going to have this form it will be some constant plus uh, x squared by 2 into v dash dash 0. But then uh, if you want the equilibrium to be stable you want uh, v dash dash 0 to be positive because then uh, the potential energy goes through a minimum if it goes through a minimum it is stable. So, if the potential energy is like this then uh, you know if you displace the ball like this it will come back here. But if the potential energy is like this, you displace the ball, it will run away. So, so you want the potential energy to look like this, but not like that. So, if it has to look like this, v dash dash uh, 0 should be positive. So, if v dash dash 0 is positive, I can call this plus k. So, it will be half k x squared. So, basically uh, any potential energy that goes through a minimum, close to the minimum will look like uh, uh, it, it will look as if uh, the mass is tied to a spring even though there is no real spring. So, usually these uh, uh, subatomic particles which are in equilibrium they are actually acted upon by forces due to other subatomic particles in their vicinity and they keep them at their equilibrium position. So, if you try to displace this subatomic particle which will of course obey quantum mechanics it will come back to its equilibrium position as if some spring is pulling them so or pulling that particular quantum object. So, there is no actual physical spring it is just that it mimics the, the, the forces the forces between subatomic particles under certain circumstances mimic that of a spring. Okay. So, given that preamble we can uh, now model so, I want to model a collection of uh, masses and springs uh, in a linear fashion. So, imagine you have a mass and a spring, mass and a spring, mass and a spring. So, this is meant to mimic uh, typically a one dimensional solid. So, usually what happens in a solid is that you have these atoms at their uh, lattice positions and then you try to displace any one atom it will the, the atom to the left will pull it towards it where the atom towards the right will push it away from it. So, that it will the atom that is trying to move away from its equilibrium position will be uh, pulled back to it towards its equilibrium position. So, uh, so, therefore, the forces acting on each subatomic particle uh, will mimic that of a spring. But notice that, uh, so now let us try and write down uh, the Hamiltonian. 
so hamiltonian of these uh, particles so we have to pretend that there are large number of them okay so if there are large number of them suppose the capital n of them then clearly they are going to have kinetic energy but they are also going to have a potential energy so now what is the potential energy that we can uh, expect between I mean what is the total potential energy see the total potential energy is the potential energy stored in all these springs because so we have to understand by how much these springs are stretched so suppose uh, xj is the displacement of this particular say atom so from its equilibrium position and this is the displacement uh, of uh, this particular the next atom and this is the displacement of the earlier atom so now what will be the amount by which this string is stretched it will clearly be xj plus 1 minus xj at least uh, i mean magnitude wise uh, it will be the magnitude of xj plus 1 uh, and xj because you see even if suppose xj is equal to say 1 uh, 1 uh, nanometer and if xj plus 1 is also 1 nanometer then the spring is not stretched because uh, both uh, so it's like uh, you know shifting the spring in this direction uh, without actually stretching it or compressing it so spring will stretch or compress only if these two are uh, different so the amount by which the, the spring in between j and j plus 1 will stretch or compress will depend upon the difference between xj plus 1 and xj so the potential energy stored in that spring between j and j plus 1 is clearly half uh, m omega squared or basically half k uh, into the amount by which the spring is getting stretched whole squared so what is the amount by which the spring is getting stretched is xj plus 1 minus xj whole squared so you see same with this uh, this spring and and so on and so forth so what you do is you have to add up uh, all the springs so starting from plus 1 to n minus 1 because uh, we stop at j plus 1 will become n when j is equal to n minus 1 okay so this is the amount of potential energy that is stored in all the springs and then the kinetic energy only the masses have the potential energy only the springs have so put together uh, this is the entire hamiltonian of the system okay so now i want to be able to uh, see just like i wrote this hamiltonian in terms of a dagger a isn't it so there was a p squared by 2m plus half k x squared i wrote that uh, like this so i also want to be able to write now you see there was only 1p and 1x here because it was one mass tied to one spring but here i have so many masses and so many springs so clearly i have to have that many a's and that many a daggers and also you see because uh, this is uh, all getting mixed up so if i expand this out i will get xj into xj plus 1 and so on and so forth so the uh, the hamiltonian of the jth uh, mass is not unrelated to the hamiltonian of j plus 1 so they are all getting mixed up so i cannot simply write this uh, as something like this i cannot write like this i mean it would be nice if i could write like this but i cannot write i mean i cannot write like this because uh, that is only if uh, j and j plus 1 don't talk to each other right if j and j plus 1 don't talk to each other then i can write as h bar omega a dagger j a j plus half so then that would be too easy but in this case uh, clearly j and j plus 1 talk to each other because there is spring connecting them right so that same spring connects both so obviously they talk to each other so if they talk to each other uh, it is not uh, separable like this we can't separate the uh, hamiltonian uh, in that way okay so what should you do instead is the question okay so what you should do instead is the following so you should uh, allow for a more general description we still want it to be something like a dagger a but we don't want it to be necessarily diagonal that means we don't want uh, we don't expect 
it to be a dagger i into a i because that means that would be only if uh, i is does not talk to i plus 1. So, what will happen is that you see because i talks to i plus 1 because a spring connecting i and i plus 1, uh, but then there is also a spring connecting i plus 1 and i plus 2. So, indirectly i will talk to i plus 2 also because through i plus 1 i will also talk to i plus 2 and so on and so forth. So, indirectly i and j will talk to each other. So, we should be allowing for that possibility. So, in general we should uh, allow for the possibility that the Hamiltonian is of something like a dagger a, but it is not a dagger i into a i or a dagger i or into i plus 1, but more generally it is a dagger i into a j times some appropriate coefficient which depends on i and j and then plus some constant which is that 0 point energy. See just like here also you had that constant, so that is called the 0 point energy which tells you uh, that uh, the lowest energy of a quantum mechanical system of this kind cannot be 0 because uh, the usual reason given is that you know you have p squared and x squared. So, you cannot simultaneously minimize, you cannot simultaneously make p squared and x squared both 0 because that will violate Heisenberg uncertainty principle. So, so there is a compromise. So, there is a minimum value of p squared plus x squared and that is the 0 point energy. Okay, uh, so, similarly for in this case also we expect 0 point energy for similar reasons. So, now the big question is how would I fix this so that these two becomes mathematically the same things. See I want this this one to be mathematically is the same as this I mean I want them to be the same operators. So, the question is how would I do that. So, what I do clearly is that I am going to write ok. So, I am going to say the following that A is uh, linearly related to P's right. So, A i can always be written as right I, I can always write this as p k into so I, I have skipped some steps so let me explain to you what this is so basically I can write a i like this uh, plus sigma k p k a i into x k by minus i h bar. So, why is that? See I can always write like this because first of all this ensures that the a's are linearly related to p and x. So, so now you see now uh, we have to ensure that because look there are lots of uh, p's right. So, there are lots of p's it is not that uh, there is only one p right. So, there are n number of p's. So, similarly there are n number of x's. So, this p k means uh, k equal to 1 to n like that. So, x k is equal to 1 to n. So, there are lots of p's uh, and lots of x there are capital n number of them. So, now you see the a's have to be linearly related to all the p's and linearly related to all the x's. So, I can always write like this because this is an identity. Why is this an identity? So, see if you take a commutator of the, this equation with uh, say x k, so k, take x k commutator of both sides, you will see that you will get an identity because x k commutator a i you will get on the left hand side, but on the right hand side you will get x k commutator p k and whenever that k does not hit this outside k it will be 0. So, when it is only that it will pick up that exactly that particular k because you know x 1 will commute with p uh, x 1 commutes with p 2. It is only that x 1 p 1 is i h bar not uh, uh, means x 1 commuted or p 2 is 0 right. So, there is uh, mass 1 and mass 2 do not talk to each other I mean like commutator is 0 they talk to each other through springs, but their momentum and position commute because they are distinguishable particles 1 and 2 are distinguishable ok. 
So, the point is that they are different particles, so their momentum and positions commute. It is only the momentum and position of the same particle do not commute. X, X1 commutator P1 is I h bar. So, so that means if you take X k commutator both sides, you will get uh, I h bar when this uh, k is frozen to be that outside k and I h bar h bar cancels and you will get uh, left hand side equals, I mean same thing equals same thing. So, left hand side is x k commutator a i, this is also x k commutator a i. But this one is you will see that it is clearly 0 because x is commute with all other x's. So, the implication is that uh, these commutators are actually numbers. So, you do not have to further commute x with this commutator because this commutator is already a number. So, it is just a, a complex number, some general complex number. So, therefore, x, a's are linearly related to p and x. So, so that is the implication. So, that if you specify x k commutator a i and p, p k commutator a i, it is like specifying uh, fully this transformation that connects a to the p's and x's and vice versa. The reverse also, I mean you can write the p's in terms of the a's and a daggers. So, uh, because uh, you know p has to have a Hermitian. So, a dagger has to be involved. So, bottom line is that uh, you can now go ahead and uh, you can go ahead and take the, so now how do you calculate? So, the bottom line, so now uh, the basic uh, problem in front of us is uh, this problem of pinning down these commutators. So, once you pin these down, you can then go ahead and explicitly uh, write down uh, so, not only you can explicitly write down the connection between the A's and P's, you can also pin down what this omega has to be. So, you will be able to explicitly say what should be this omega. So, now how do you go about uh, pinning this down? So, firstly we will start with this. Okay. So, now take the commutator of A i with H. Okay. So, if you take the commutator of A i with H, you will get this because it will pick up this particular a i only. Because you see uh, commutator of a i and a j is 0, uh, commutator of a i and a dagger j is also 0 unless a i equals j. So, in other words, uh, this is the uh, rule we are using. a i commutator a j is always 0 irrespective of what i and j are. Uh, but however, a i commutator a dagger j is 0 unless i equals j and if i equals j the commutator is 1. Okay. So, uh, if i equals j commutator is 1 because that is what we did for this uh, 1 must tied to 1 spring. So, you see a commutator a dagger if there was only 1 must and 1 spring it is just a 1 commutator a 1 uh, a dagger 1 a a 1 commutator a dagger 1 which is 1, but here uh, there are many uh, springs and many masses. So, it is a i and a j. So, clearly mass i has nothing to do with mass j. So, they will commute. So, except when i and j are the same then the commutator is not 0. It is uh, so instead it is the simplest non-zero quantity which is 1. So, we are going to use that idea and uh, we are going to rewrite uh, so, the commutator of uh, a i and h okay, is now going to be this one. So, it is going to be uh, omega i comma j times a j summed over all j. So, that is what is it is going to be that is the left hand side. So, that means if I start like this the commutator is going to be that. So, now that is should be equal to right hand side which is so instead of this h if I use this h. So, what is that going to look like? So, that is going to look like this. So, you, you get first a i uh, commutator p j square. So, you will get a i commutator p j which is a number into p j, but once a i commutator p j is a number it does not matter whether you put it on the left or right. So, you have to do that you see you have to write this as p j into p j which is p j squared. So, a i commutator p j p j is first you do this commutator then you do this commutator. So, those two gives you the same answer because uh, a i commutator p j is a number. So, whether you do it on the right side or left side it is the same because uh, it has become a number. So, p j multiplying 
the sum number to the left and same number to the right is the same thing. So, you will get uh, twice the same answer and that twice will cancel the 2 in the denominator here. Okay, so, instead of 1 by 2 m it will become same thing into 2 divided by 2 m. So, that 2 2 will cancel you will get 1 by m. So, same thing will happen here also. So, it is the same uh, same thing uh, twice. So, that half m omega squared or half k x squared will become just k x basically it will just become uh, k. Instead of half k it will become k because it is the twice of this means the same thing twice. So, it is uh, so you will get this one. Okay. So, this is what that is. Okay. So, now this is this is one equation. So, this is our equation. So, this is uh, what we, are, we got. So, now we can further take commutator with respect to x k suppose. So, now I so I got this one um, generic equation. Now, I take commutator of this equation once with x k and then once with p k. So, if I take commutator of this equation which I am circling here uh, with respect to x k what I will get left hand side will become like this because uh, so forget this now I mean this much is the equation. So, uh, so I take x k I mean left hand side commutator x k. So, this will become this one ok. So, this after taking commutator. So, after taking x k commutator clearly this all will go away because this is a number. So, this much has become a number because the commutator of a and x. So, commutator of a and x and a and p are all numbers some complex numbers. So, now if I take x k commutator this one. So, this is going to uh, become 0 because uh, x k is a uh, position operator uh, and uh, x k commute commutes with all other x's. Okay. So, what about uh, this one? So, this one will not become 0 because x k commutator p j is 0 unless j equals k. So, if j equals k then it becomes x k commutator p k. So, what is x k commutator p k? It is i h bar and i h bar. So, that means what will survive is a i commutator p k because j has become equal to k now. So, you will get uh, a i commutator p k into i h bar divided by m. So, that is one equation. So, that is if you decide to do x k commutator this thing. Now, so that is after doing that we got this. Now, second thing what we do is we do p k commutator this whatever I have circled here. So, if I do x k commutator what I have circled here I get this one. So, if I do p k commutator what I have circled here what you will get. So, you left hand side will become this, but right hand side this will go away because this is already a number this commutator a i p j is already a number. So, if I do p k commutator, so the it will be p k commutator p j which is always 0 anyway because the both are p's only. So, now only thing which will not be 0 is the, the second term now. So, now what you will get if I if you do this carefully is you will get this I will not uh, actually do it, but you you can do it. So, if p k commutator x j plus 1 will be equal to uh, minus i h bar if j plus 1 equals k and 0 otherwise. So, you will get all this type of thing. So, you can work this out you will get this. Okay. So, do not take my word for it actually work it out. So, so you will get these two equations. So, see 8.7 and 8.8 .8 are our basic equations now. So, we have to solve this. So, so, you see these are so these are somehow you are like unknowns. This x, x k commutator a j is an unknown, then uh, a commutator p k is these are unknowns. Uh, basically, x k commutator a j and p k commutator a j you can think of that. Those are your unknowns. So, I have to solve that. Uh, so, these are simultaneous equations 8.7 and 8.8. .8 these are simultaneous equations for those commutators. So, now uh, you see, uh, so now this seems quite hopeless because it is especially seems hopeless because I do not even know what this omega is. So, the question is how would you, how on earth would you be able to even solve this 8.7 and 8.8 .8, especially when you do not even know what omega is. 
So, but then we should not despair because you see uh, this has the form of a matrix multiplication. See what is uh, if, if somebody tells me uh, say omega i j into uh, some uh, some y j uh, sim, sigma j. So, this is as if uh, or some matrix m is getting multiplied by some vector and I am taking the ith component. So, it is as if I am doing that right. So, it is as if this is a two some m n by n matrix and this is some column vector and I am multiplying taking ith. So, now uh, specifically you see this uh, this uh, I can always think of this uh, matrix element i comma j to be a function of i minus j because you will see that when I do that this will have the this summation will have the form of a convolution. So, so if you do not believe it you do not have to uh, fret too much because what I will do is you, I mean I will allow you to first make this assumption and it is like uh, a posteriori justification that means you assume that this is ok and then uh, substitute and you will see that it will work. So, it would not lead to horrible contradictions. So, then you can work backwards and convince yourself that it could not have been in any other way. So, uh, so I do not want to spend too much time uh, you know trying to rigorously justify why this is uh, the only approach that makes any sense. Uh, but it is in fact the only approach that makes any sense. So, the bottom line is that this will be a function of i minus j. First of all uh, this is uh, extremely plausible because you see this system especially if it extends forever in both directions is translationally invariant. That means that any any physical quantity that is a function of i minus j will clearly only depend on i minus j that means it depends on how far apart j and i are. So, that means uh, it only depends on the distance between i and j it does not depend on exactly where i is or j is because if, if I shift both by the same amount the system will still look the same because you see the system extends to infinity in both uh, positive as well as negative direction. So, there is no sense of this being the origin or that being the origin. So, I can uh, start anywhere. So, but if I have two points the only thing that determines uh, a physical quantity which depends on two points is the distance between those points. It, it does not depend on exactly where any one point is because there is no sense of any origin there is there is no reference point uh, that you can associate any particular point to. So, if you have two points the only reference is the other point. So, therefore, it is the distance between them is the only reference that you have ok. So, if that is the case then omega i j which is a physical quantity is now a function only of the difference between i and j ok. So, then the thing then things simplify enormously. So, what we are going to do is we are going to rewrite this uh, in a Fourier uh, in the Fourier sense that we can always rewrite a function which depends on i minus j in terms of its Fourier component. So, now your q is some kind of a uh, Fourier uh, component of uh, omega tilde q will be a Fourier component q is your uh, Fourier transform variable. So, if i and j were your direct variables uh, q is your Fourier transformed variables. So, similarly we are going to uh, rewrite your commutators also in terms of Fourier because after all these commutators are also functions of uh, j and k. So, it should only be a function of the distance between j and k and not j and k independently for reasons that I just told you. So, it is going to be a function of uh, the distance between j and k. So, then you simply go ahead and substitute here and then you will be able to do uh, lots with this. So, uh, I want to stop now because uh, I want to you know uh, walk you through this uh, somewhat slowly. It is easy for me to simply scroll down this slide and then say we are all done, but then it's, it would be doing injustice to this course because 
uh, many of these uh, descriptions are not readily available in the books, especially the steps that I have written down are many times glossed over in many of the books and they do not properly explain them. So, this is the first uh, course that uh, I have seen on, uh, on YouTube or anywhere else where uh, many of the steps that are hidden in many of the books are explicitly explained. So, I think it is important for me to spend some time going through many of these steps so that you will feel comfortable about learning the course properly. Okay, so I am going to stop here in the next, uh, next class, I am going to continue with this step. So, it is even though it is just algebra, it is worthwhile doing it properly because this sort of algebra appears again and again uh, in uh, solid state physics and many other subjects when you are trying to understand how to diagonalize uh, Hamiltonians uh, involving many particles. Okay, I am going to stop here. Thank you and hope you will join me for the next class. Thank you.